star goalie, a 26-year-old Swede with extraordinary reflexes. Oh, Lindbergh, a glorious save. Oh. He could stop a puck flying at him at 100 miles an hour. Right in and at the 1980 Olympics, he played on the Swedish hockey team that won the bronze medal. We were the only team we didn't get beat by the U.S. We tied them 2-2, or they tied us 27 seconds to go in the first game, and we were really disappointed, but it ended up to be uh, the only team we didn't get beat by them. And I had a lot of good memories from that uh, Olympics. He had a passion for speed. His most prized possession, a high-performance turbocharged Porsche 930, worth more than $100,000. The last time Pelly Lindbergh drove his Porsche was after a home game in Philadelphia last month. Pelly didn't play that game. It was a normal night off for him. Flyer captain Dave Pullen picks up the story from here. And after winning 10 straight, everybody was in a, in a pretty good mood. And it's almost an unwritten that you'll go out and get something to eat with your family or whatever. And then most of the guys will congregate later in the evening uh, at a bar or a club or whatever and, uh, and have a drink to celebrate. After the game, Pelly went home for dinner with his fiancée, Kirsten Peach. It was almost 1 o'clock when he thought he still wanted to go out and see the rest of the guys because he knew they were expecting him. And, and he wanted me to go too, and I'm still blaming myself. I, I never did. Lindbergh left his New Jersey home just outside Philadelphia and went to Bennigan's, where he met his teammates and drank at least two beers and a liqueur called peppermint schnapps. Somerdale, New Jersey police detective Charles Pope investigated Lindbergh's last night. Do you know if he was intoxicated when he was here? We have no indication that he was, no. He left Bennigan's uh, approximately 2.30 in the morning. He went out the route I'm taking here and went to the Coliseum, which is a uh, health spa and restaurant and bar combined. How long was Pelly Lindbergh at the Coliseum Bar? Approximately uh, two and a half hours. He arrived here around three o'clock and left uh, approximately 5.30, 5.35. Player Brad Marsh was among those at the bar with Pelly. To me, he didn't seem intoxicated. Uh, there was other players on the team in far worse shape than, than he was. Kathy McNeil, who also was at the Coliseum Bar, told her lawyer, Joe Pizzullo, that Lindbergh had at least a beer and a B-52 which is vodka, Bailey's Irish Cream, and Kahlua. Obviously, everyone was drinking. Um, it was, I understand, a party with quite a few of the flyers there, and they were drinking. At about 5.30 a.m., McNeil and 28-year-old Ed Parvin left the Coliseum Bar with Lindbergh and squeezed into his two-seater Porsche. Two witnesses who were behind him stated that when he turned on the Somerdale Road, he did uh, weave a little into the oncoming traffic lane. They came to the stoplight, Pelly stopped his car in this lane, the two young ladies pulled up beside him, the light turned green, and Mr. Lindbergh took off. Mr. Lindbergh drove his vehicle down Somerdale Road, uh, just as I am now, approached the curb, didn't turn the vehicle at all, and went right into the wall, right here. Lindbergh was brain dead when he arrived at the hospital. Tests taken there show his blood alcohol level was twice the legal limit allowed in New Jersey. Three days later, he died when his life support systems were removed. Passenger Ed Parvin fractured his skull, has amnesia, and has lost his ability to speak. The other passenger, Kathy McNeil, also was injured seriously. Have you found a way to deal with it? Um, yeah, you just take... You know, day by day. <laughs> Kathy McNeil fractured her pelvic bone, ruptured her spleen.